How's it going everybody? Jesse Patella here with Redefine Effects and today I'm going to give you an introduction to the new Typhlo Terrain Operators. I'll show you how to create your very first terrain. We're also going to add a liquid simulation with the new shallow water solver. I will also show you how to add snow and melt it depending on where the sun is hitting it. We're also going to make the terrain loopable and copy it around seamlessly to extend your landscape. And we're going to add different terrain colors to completely change the look and get different results like this. So lots to cover. Let's jump right into it. All right. So at the end of your operator list, these are our new terrain operators. They are available in both Typhlo Free and Typhlo Pro. However, it's only the Pro version that will give you CUDA acceleration. So you're going to start by adding a burst terrain. So by default, this is just a flat plane terrain. So let's add the terrain noise operator. So here you can choose from different types of noise, increase or decrease the strength of the noise. And under domain warp, you can add basically another noise on top of the first noise. So I'll set this to 50 and you can change the face of the noise to see what's going on. So it's sort of warping the landscape using this fractal noise to create some different looking ridges. So you can animate the face, for example, to create time lapse effects. Next, we can add terrain slope. This is very fun. Basically, you're just controlling the landscape with this curve. So you can easily create a pit or create a mountain. Right now it's set to radial, so you can set it to linear on X or Y. And you can even create an additional point in between and raise that up and down to control what you're going to get. So maybe if you're working on like a waterfall, water simulation, you can very easily create that now. So I'm going to go for more like a valley um, setup here. Maybe extend the curve, adjust the height if you'd like to emphasize the effect or instead flatten it. Next, we can add terrain erosion to start adding some very nice additional detail. So this was before, this is after. You have some presets here for the type of erosion. So I would encourage you to try all of these and see what you're getting. Next, we're going to add terrain effects. This is before. This is after, so it's adding some additional detail once again. You have different modes here. Right now it's set to rugged, so you can set it to plateau, sediment, rocky, chisel. So right now I'm in mode chisel, but I also get additional presets just for the type of chisel that I want. So really the, the amount of possibilities here is insane. So I think I'll set it to chip. I like that one the most. Next we're going to add terrain warp which will completely change the look. So similar to what we did with the domain warp under terrain noise, what this does is it warps the noise or distorts. So this is before, this is after. So I'm going to set the strength much, much lower, maybe just 0 0.01, just something very subtle. And actually, I think I liked it more without the terrain warp. So I'll just get rid of it. But I wanted to show you what it does and how it works. Next, we can add terrain snow. Here you can easily control the snow line or, you know, where the snow begins to appear. Basically, you can give it the appearance of ice. So if you set this to 10 centimeters, you get some frozen ice on top of the landscape. So mainly what I want to show you here is the sunlight standard and maybe make a target direct light so that you can visually see which way the light is pointing and you can just pick the light for the sunlight node and then increase the melt amount and it will melt the snow um, depending on where the light is hitting it. So then you can just easily move this around. Maybe just put it right above the horizon and then you can add some noise to the snow line. So maybe I'll set this to 50 centimeters and I'm affecting you know, basically the edge of the snow. So I'll turn off the snow for now so I can show you the terrain color operator. Here you have some beautiful presets. So maybe I'll set it to Highland Streams, which looks like this. There's also one called Cold Stone, which looks like the surface of the moon. Frozen Peaks is beautiful too. This is Rusty Range, 
but I love the one with the river, so I'll just say Highland Streams. Next, we're gonna add Terrain Liquid. Check Initial Liquid Depth to get some of the liquid to show up above the surface. And now you can just, you know, go forward on your timeline and the simulation will run. And the liquid will slowly go down the hill and create these beautiful lakes. It's super fast to update. It's basically a real-time simulation. So if I want more water, I can just increase the initial liquid depth to maybe 0.3 centimeters. Here we go. You can also give it an evaporation rate, so the water will gradually evaporate and disappear. So I'm going to turn off the liquid and the terrain color because I want to show you how to tile it. So first you need to add a terrain tile operator and set the mode to loop terrain edges. So again, this is before and this is after. It basically makes it a tileable texture. And then you need to add another terrain tile. Set the mode to copy terrain into tiles. And by default, you'll get one on the right side and they, you know, they blend together perfectly. So then you can just increase the numbers on the different axes to get more copies created. So I'll just set all of them to one. And now I basically have a three by three grid created with the terrain and I can easily just maybe right click on some of these operators and say reseed selected and I'll just get a completely different looking um, terrain that way. You know, I can enable the terrain snow and it's still going to work and update. I can enable the terrain color now and I'm getting this beautiful, long, seamless valley. So finally, if you want to be able to render this out, you need to add a terrain mesh operator. Click on assign Thai terrain color text map and then you can just sample the material from Thai flow. And here inside of your material editor is the texture map for the terrain. So just copy that, make a new material using your preferred renderer. So I'm using V-Ray and just paste instance the Typhlow map into this and then apply that V-Ray material to Typhlow. So now you can just add your usual, you know, V-Ray sun or any other light that you would like to use. Just be aware that the textures will currently not show up in your IPR render. So you need to do an actual production render and then the textures will show up. There's so much more to explore and do with all of the different channels for colors. I'm definitely going to make more tutorials. If you found this tutorial helpful, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to take a deep dive into learning Typhlow with me, check out my new Typhlow masterclass at redefineffects.com slash torque. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you on the next one.